William J. Bernstein, A Splendid Exchange, How Trade Shaped the World from Prehistory to Today. Welcome to the fascinating world of global trade as unveiled in William J. Bernstein's A Splendid Exchange, How Trade Shaped the World from Prehistory to Today. Delve deep into the beginnings of commerce in Mesopotamia, and follow the captivating story of trade routes emerging along the Persian Gulf, the Red Sea, and the Mediterranean. Discover how the developments in transportation and trade technologies revolutionized the way humans exchanged goods and services. This book summary holds all you need to know about the evolution of trade and globalization, along with the repercussions and positive outcomes of changing global commerce practices. From Mesopotamia to Supermarkets Our modern era of globalized trade has its roots in Mesopotamian civilization, where thousands of years ago, the necessity of exchanging goods between regions laid the foundation for today's intricate trade networks. Traveling back in time to the cradle of civilization, we find diverse ancient civilizations bonding over goods like obsidian, barley, fish, and wool to create the first trade routes. From there, the practice spread to other parts of the world, giving rise to the complex system that now brings diverse products to our supermarket shelves. Rewinding to Mesopotamia, the region located between the Euphrates and Tigris rivers, we discover the origins of commerce. Home to nations such as Sumeria, Assyria, and Babylonia, Mesopotamia was abundant in resources like barley, fish, and wool. However, it lacked essential materials such as timber, metals, and stone required for constructing weapons, boats, and shelters. The value of trade became apparent, and these societies began exchanging surplus goods for the necessary resources from other regions. As a result, the Persian Gulf emerged as an early center for trade and commerce by 300 BC. One of the first traded goods was obsidian, a black volcanic rock prized for its ability to be transformed into sharp weapons or tools. This valuable commodity found its way to places like Greece, where archaeologists have discovered obsidian flakes dating back over 12,000 years. Such discoveries offer strong evidence of ancient trade routes and interactions between different civilizations. As human settlements expanded westward towards Egypt and Greece, new trade routes arose in the Red Sea and the Mediterranean. Greece, for example, bartered their wine and oils for the grains they lacked, which they imported from Egypt. This early exchange of resources was only the beginning of the intricate global network we see today. From far-flung locales like Peru, New Zealand, and Portugal, we now have access to a world's worth of products, thanks to the trade routes forged millennia ago by our Mesopotamian predecessors. Camels, Trade Revolutionaries The Pleistocene era, commonly known as the Ice Age, ended around 10,000 years ago, after humans migrated from East Siberia to the Americas via an icy bridge. Horses, the camel's evolutionary predecessors, journeyed from North America to Asia, where they evolved to conserve water, making them ideal for arid regions such as Arabia. Initially, camels were kept for milk, and donkeys were preferred for transportation. However, around 1500 BC, nomadic tribes discovered the camel's superiority for cargo transport, with their large padded hooves able to withstand harsh desert terrain and carry double the weight of donkeys. This realization revolutionized trade systems along the Arabian sands and Asian steppes, leading to an exchange of luxury goods including frankincense, myrrh, and precious aromatics across the Mediterranean Sea. In the medieval era, trade between China and the Muslim world increased, with the Prophet Muhammad himself taking part in the leather, raisins, textiles, and frankincense trade. Muslim traders ventured to China around 620 AD, carrying items such as copper, ivory, incense, and turtle shells, while returning with gold, pearls, silk, and brocade. Despite the dangerous journeys through perilous waters and treacherous land, the potential for vast wealth enticed many Muslim traders, though countless lives and fortunes were lost through shipwrecks and other hazards. Spices, Slavery, and Disease The Western fascination for spices surged around the 11th century, bringing immense profits to European merchants. 
spices were incorporated into medications, lending an air of exoticism and allure. However, its darker side was linked to the slave trade, as European merchants offered slaves in exchange for spices in Arab markets. Unwittingly, European traders played a role in the spread of diseases like the Black Death, stemming from their global trade practices. In the 11th century, Europe became irresistibly drawn to the allure of exotic spices from the East. The origins of these prized flavors, such as cinnamon or nutmeg, remained a mystery to merchants in bustling trade cities like Genoa and Venice. What they did know, however, was that these spices could fetch impressive profits, often marking up prices by more than 100%. The fascination with these flavors extended beyond sumptuous feasts, making their way into the world of medicine. Despite the lack of concrete evidence for their healing properties, physicians and pharmacists incorporated spices into their remedies, imbuing them with an enchanting and exotic aura. Yet, the pursuit of these coveted ingredients harbored a dark secret, the slave trade. European merchants acquired spices from Arab markets in cities like Cairo and Alexandria. In exchange for these rare commodities, they sold slaves, primarily from the Balkan region. These unfortunate souls would often be transformed into Muslim soldier slaves. Ironically, the spices these merchants procured were originally traded by Arabs who had secured them from China in exchange for ivory and incense. The far-reaching consequences of global trade did not stop there. The spice trade inadvertently facilitated the spread of devastating diseases, most notably the Black Death Plague. Port cities teeming with trade, like Venice and Genoa, were severely afflicted, with Venice, for instance, losing a staggering 60% of its population in 1348 alone. Traced back to China's Himalayan region, infected rats boarded ships destined for Arabia carrying the deadly disease. Their fleas crawled into textile goods, and when transported to Europe, these diseased insects infected both humans and their pets, thus unleashing one of the deadliest pandemics in history. Pioneering Maritime Exploration In the 15th century, Portugal emerged as a leader in the world of trade by developing the advanced cargo ship called the Caravel. This maritime innovation allowed Europeans to establish their own trade routes in the Indian Ocean. Portuguese merchants strategically set up ports along the east coast of Africa while the Spanish-Portuguese alliance expanded westward into the Atlantic. Contrary to the flat earth belief, Christopher Columbus, an Italian explorer, convinced Spanish royalty to support his quest for a western route to Asia. Despite the estimated distance being considerably longer than the eastward route, Columbus pursued his goal and reached the Caribbean in 1492, opening up the new world of the Americas. In 1519, Portuguese explorer Ferdinand Magellan led the first circumnavigation of the globe. Although his voyage was tragically cut short in the Philippines, Juan Sebastián Elcano took over as captain and completed the groundbreaking journey, significantly broadening the horizons of the known world. Birth of the Global Economy The 16th century marked a turning point in human history, as the sea voyages of Columbus, Magellan, and others expanded awareness of the world and enabled the genesis of a truly global economy. Pioneers in this transformation were the Spanish, Portuguese, and Dutch, their knowledge and skillful sailors used wind patterns to navigate the globe effortlessly, kickstarting global trade. By 1650, numerous goods such as corn, wheat, coffee, tea, and sugar were transported far from their native regions, enriching international marketplaces. With the rise of global commerce, the English East India Company and the Dutch East India Company emerged as vital players, supported by corporate mergers and the economic prowess of their respective nations. Holland excelled as the most financially advanced European country, with low interest rates and eager investment in trade corporations like the Dutch East India Company, ultimately birthing the interconnected global market we know today. The Rise of Free Trade In the 1600s, Holland held economic supremacy, but this shifted toward England in the 18th century, with the English East India Company, EIC, controlling the highly lucrative cotton trade. The EIC was deemed an unhealthy monopoly by free trade advocates such as Adam Smith, who believed in supporting multiple enterprises for optimal competition. 
However, the prevailing economic theory was mercantilism, focusing on gold and silver reserves rather than encouraging imports and exports. Eventually, free trade theories took hold in the 19th century, influenced by Smith's Wealth of Nations and David Ricardo's principles of political economy and taxation, emphasizing the law of comparative advantage. England's Cobden Chevalier Treaty of 1860 removed import tariffs, further promoting free trade across Europe. Rise of Global Manufacturing The intricate dance of today's manufacturing industry sprawls across the globe, with nations producing various components before assembling them elsewhere. Fueled by breakthrough technologies from the 19th century, global manufacturing streamlined long-distance transport and trade. Steamships took center stage in 1890, revolutionizing global shipping, soon followed by railroads, which transformed land-based transportation. The advent of refrigeration in 1830 further facilitated long-distance transport of perishable goods, allowing fresh products like cut flowers and beef to cross oceans. By 1900, technology-driven reduced shipping costs spurred transcontinental trade, enabling American grain to compete with European counterparts and providing year-round access to seasonal products. This revolution particularly impacted the bulk trade of goods like coal and ore, exemplified by England's smelting factories importing or worldwide and simultaneously exporting coal to various international locations. The protectionism pitfall. As the 20th century dawned, free trade was thriving, but the 1920s changed everything. The Ford Nemec Cumber Tariff Act of 1922 launched a protectionist era in the United States, setting import tariffs above 40%. At first, the economy boomed, but the Great Depression followed in the 1930s. Politicians responded by intensifying protectionist policies with the Smoot Hawley Tariff Act, sending average import tariffs skyrocketing to nearly 60%. These protectionist measures were grounded in the 19th century trade developments, where shrinking price differences between imported and local goods threatened local industries. Unfortunately, European retaliation in the form of their own import tariffs amplified the situation. Today, economists pinpoint the Smoot Hawley Act as a key contributor to the Great Depression, a cautionary tale of protectionism gone awry. Unveiling Free Trade's Double Edged Sword the United States initially resisted free trade in the early 20th century, but by the 1950s, it had wholeheartedly embraced it due to the country's dominant position post-World War II and advancements in global transportation. The benefits of free trade were evident in the surge of wealth for the nation and higher growth rates. However, free trade also led to income inequality, where low-skilled workers saw stagnant wages while those in higher positions enjoyed substantial gains. Addressing this income disparity is crucial to prevent social and political unrest, ensure civic responsibility, and promote investment in economic growth. Once the cloud of World War II lifted in 1945, the United States emerged as a powerful figure with minimal concerns over foreign competition. This new reality, combined with global transportation advancements like combustion engines, advanced aircraft, and efficient shipping containers, guided the nation to realize the economic potential of free trade. If a product could be manufactured at a reduced cost in another country, it was in the country's best interest to embrace this international exchange. As a result, the United States enjoyed a significant influx of wealth in the post-war era. Unsurprisingly, other free-trading nations also experienced higher growth rates compared to their non-free-trading counterparts, with some developing nations rising to world power. However, this free-trade romance was not a bed of roses. Low-skilled laborers in developed nations bore witness to the less glamorous side of this economic phenomenon. While those occupying management and high-skilled positions experienced exceptional benefits, the average worker's wage stagnated for an entire generation, deepening income inequality. This disparity became a catalyst for social and political unrest and must be addressed as a top priority. The issue of income inequality transcends social and civic obligations, it also has a direct influence on investment and economic expansion. To continue reaping the rewards of free trade, societies must strive to close the wage gap and create a more equitable distribution of wealth.
In conclusion, A Splendid Exchange offers an extraordinary overview of the history and growth of global trade. From the early days of Mesopotamia to the age of groundbreaking maritime expeditions, this book presents an eye-opening panorama of humanity's endeavor to exchange goods and create a lively global market. The influence of various cultures in shaping commercial practices, the introduction of new transportation technologies, and the perils and benefits of protectionism form the core of this engaging narrative. While globalization sparked the modern economic environment, income inequality and social issues remain as challenges to address, underscoring the importance of understanding the entire arc of trade history 